we're going to explain what that weird word commonad is and how you have been already using it on the tools that you use and love. But please just bear with me on this kind of word presentation of the music one. So first, let me introduce myself. I'm Juan. I'm from a nice, lovely country in South America. We, have, we live on the Andes. We have the part of the Amazonian rainforest. We have the Galapagos Islands. And I've been using React and Haskell a couple years now. But before that, I felt in love with functional programming. So we're going to see what is functional programming exactly. So functional programming treats the computation as the evaluation of mathematical functions and avoids changing state and mutable data. <laughs> well, but, <laughs> we have. <laughs> We have already seen some tools like Immutable.js or Redux, which try to tackle these parts, but these are already core values for functional programming. However, functional programming comes really tied with, wait for it, type systems. <laughs> so I love that TypeScript is a success case for type system adoption, and th there is something very worth of note. However, any sufficiently advanced type system will eventually lead to some weird words like monad, functor, applicative, commonad. And I'm a bit afraid that that might be turning people away from functional programming. Uh, although there are tons of tutorials talking about how the monad is just like a burrito. So I'm not sure if that's true. I just launched something like that, but I'm not sure if that's actually true. There, the, the, but there is people out there trying to make this concepts more digestible for more people, there are initiatives like making a functional programming more mainstream JavaScript. There's a project called Fantasyland, which I'm not sure if it's production ready, but you should totally check it out. It's mind blowing, and you're going to learn a lot on that without ever leaving JavaScript. But this talk was actually inspired by a short paper named The Creative UIs Are the Future, and the Future is Commonatic by Phil Freeman, the author of the PureScript language which is like writing Haskell for the front end if you want to torture yourself like that. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to see what a declarative UI is. And I think you already know that for a declarative UI, you're going to have a render function, which is going to evaluate the state and will return for us a view. It's a very simplistic view of what React is, but React is a perfect example for a declarative UI, as many of other presenters have already explained that to you. We should also check the next concept. What is a co-monad? It's not a simple common, it's not a simple monad. A co-monad represents a lazy unfolding of all possible future states of a user interface as well as the transition allowed between those states. And there you have the type class definition for a co-monad in Haskell. Just because I wasn't sure about how to translate that to TypeScript, but I'm gonna try to, to translate that. So you can think of a co-monad here like an interface on asteroids, which will have two functions that we're going to care about, extend and extract. Extract will simply take an object of type A out of that wrapper, and extend will simply take a function that would modify whatever A object is there and make it a B. And we can see some patterns using a commonad, for example, and a store. And a store here, is, this is simple JavaScript, it's going to take a state and a render function. You can see extract simply, a ren it's going to evaluate the state and, re and render it. And extend is going to apply that F function and build a compose store, modifying the store. And you might have heard this, but not really understand it. But there you have an example. There's the application store object. There you have an state, simple object, render, which will simply render for us some React component. And there we have something like using that store commonad pattern. So in extend, we're going to check if the message inside the state is work and change it for React conf, and extract will simply render. So you have, you have it there. React is a perfect example for a store commonad pattern. We still have more examples for what commonads are capable of doing. Uh, so let's just wait for it. I know that you might be familiar with this tool. We have more machines. So what are more machines? These are just finite state machines where the transitions are going to be restricted according to the type of the input I. And what I just say is something very similar to what Redux is doing. So it will restrict the change of a state according to the type of the input, as you will see on a reducer, right? So there you have it. A more object where it's going to take a handle function and an application, and the struct will simply take the application out of that object, and extend it's going to handle that update and move whatever is inside to a next state. Uh, well, you just missed the example with the Moore machines, but what you can 
take out of this is that you can combine these components and have a more object wrapping an application object, which is a store object, and then with those extract functions, you're going to start peeling it. Trust me, there are better ways to do this. But what's in there for me? I just heard this guy talking about co-monads, monads, burritos. What is he doing next? He's going to talk about tacos to explain React Suspense. Well, just like translating the React documentation or making the web more accessible, I just want more people to join me into learning functional programming. Why is that important? Well, because your everyday monad <laughs> is a burrito? Kinda. This just means that there's people that care enough to make tutorials for newcomers and make this more simple for everyone who is interested in joining us. And your everyday component is already in your tools. Kind of, because I'm not saying that React or Redux were actually built with these patterns in mind, but you can see that these abstractions are not an alien term, and you can actually apply it on your everyday life, and functional programming is worth to learn. So the takeaway I want you to have from this presentation, which just disappeared, is that, <laughs> well, functional programming might be for many of you a new way of thinking. New, way of think new ways of thinking mean new ways of solving problems, and new ways of solving problems means, new way means better software. And after all, isn't that what we all want? And that's it.